The number one most used type of screen in the ServiceNow user interface is the list view. It's like the UI workhorse and for good reason. It packs a ton of tools for configuring and filtering and sorting and working with records from the database. And in this video, you'll learn them all. Welcome to our newly updated ServiceNow Fundamental Series. Jeff here from ServiceNow Simple, where we help you understand the ins and outs of ServiceNow with a focus on keeping things as simple as possible. This video is all about list views and it's important to understand how they work and all of the tools they provide, whether you're prepping for a certification exam or you just wanna become a better ServiceNow user because list views are everywhere. Some of the keywords to watch for in this video include list view, list control menu, column options menu, list fields menu, filter, breadcrumb, list layout, personalize, and dot walking. And as always, I appreciate you being part of the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let's jump into it. More often than not, when you click on a module within the application navigator, you're going to be opening a list view and accessing a list of records from the database. I'll navigate to the user administration application and click the roles module, for example. And this is a list view. List view is a page that displays a list of records from a database table. It includes a set of tools for filtering and sorting and configuring how the records are displayed. There's a label on the header bar right here that tells us we're viewing a list of records from the role table. And if I return to the application navigator and the user administration application, but this time I choose the users module, I get another list view. This time displaying records from the user table. Regardless of the type of records being displayed, all list views look pretty much the same and provide the same set of tools and capabilities. Let's look at the overall design. We have the header bar across the top, which provides us with a bunch of tools, and I'll step through each of these in a bit. And below that, we have the breadcrumbs bar, which tells us which records we're viewing. Currently, we're viewing all records from the user table. And beneath that, we have the column header bar and the column search bar, which can be toggled on or off via this magnifying glass icon. And then comes the good stuff, the data, where each row represents a record and each column represents a field or an attribute of the record. And at the bottom, the footer bar tells us the total number of records and it gives us tools for traversing through the records in chunks currently chunks of 20. Every list view includes three different menus that provide tools for working with the list at different levels. First, the list control menu provides items that apply to the list as a whole, and you access it by clicking the hamburger icon on the header bar, or you can also right click on the header bar itself. The second menu can be opened by hovering over any column heading clicking the three dots. This is called the column options menu and it contains items related to the specific column. And finally, the list fields menu can be accessed by right clicking on any field. It contains items that apply to the specific field or record. Let's have a look at the tools we have here from a functional perspective and I'll start with something super simple, setting the page size. If you notice down here where we see the total number of records, we also have these arrows that allow us to move forward or backward through the list in pages. In this case, I'm viewing 20 records per page and I can move forward and backward 20 at a time. Sometimes that's cumbersome and you wanna see more records per page. And to do that, I access the list control menu, select the show item and choose a larger page size. I'll select 100 rows per page. Now I can see 100 records per page and traverse through more quickly. Now let's talk a bit about how the records are being displayed. And we'll start with their sort order. When you open a list view for the first time, the records will be sorted by one of the following fields. The order field, the number field, the name field, or the display field, depending upon which of those fields is available for that particular list. And there are two options available for changing the sort order. First, clicking on a column header or a label will sort the records by that column. 
And if you click that label again, you can toggle between ascending or descending. I bet you've seen that sort of thing before. <laughs> or you can open the column options menu for a column and then select sort A to Z or sort Z to A menu items. That's sort of cool. <laughs> and how about grouping records? This can be super helpful and I do it quite often. Let's say, for example, I want to see all of the user records grouped by whether they're active or not. We actually, I have two ways to do this. One way is to open the column options menu for the column you wish to group on, the active column in our case, and then choose the group by item. Now I can see there's only one record where the active value is false and the remaining 624 are true. And I can expand the groups to see the actual records. Once you've set your list to use grouping, you can identify the column being grouped by looking for this little folder icon beside the column label. And to remove the grouping, return to that column options menu, select the ungroup item. Another way to group the list is to open the list controls menu and select the group by item from there and then choose the column for grouping here. This is super handy because here, you can group the list by any field on the table regardless of if it's currently being displayed or not. And if you return here and select the none item, you can clear the grouping that way. Speaking of which fields are being displayed, you can choose those by clicking the personalized list icon right here. It looks like a gear. The box on the left shows all of the fields on the table that are available and the box on the right shows which fields have already been selected to display. You can move them back and forth using these arrow buttons. I'll add the business phone field to the list. And you can set the order of the fields, remember they're displayed as columns, by moving them up or down in the selected box. I'll move the business phone field up after the email field. Before I leave here, notice there are several other options I can set regarding how the list displays. You can always come here to reset the list back to the original format. I'll click OK. And now you can see the business phone field has been added. This is called personalizing the list. And it's important to remember that anything you do within this list personalization tool only applies to you as the logged in user. It doesn't change the way anyone else sees the list. There is a way, however, to create views of the list that can be saved and used by others. But only people with the appropriate roles can do it. As an example, let's assume we have a user support team that works with handling password resets. And they, need a, they need a view set up that displays each user's user ID, email address, and the password needs reset fields. To create that, an administrator would use what is called the list layout tool. And I can access it by opening the column options menu for any column, doesn't matter, and then selecting the configure item and the list layout sub item. You'll notice this looks a lot like that list personalization tool, except for these tools down here, which allow us to save our changes as a view. If I select the view name dropdown, I can see there are already several views that are saved for this list. I'll show you how to access those in a second, but for now, I'm going to click New to create a new view of this list. And I'll name the view Password Reset. Next, I'll set up the columns as specified with the User ID field, the Email Address field, and the Password Needs Reset field. And I'll click Save. Now to access my view, I'll open the List Controls menu, select the Views item, and here you can see the list of views that have been created. I'll choose my new password reset view and there you have it. What's really nice is that the members of the password reset team can be configured so that the password reset view is their default view for this list when they come in. That way each time they come in, they don't have to go through the trouble of selecting the view they prefer. 
We also have a set of tools we can use to narrow down which records are actually being included in the list. This is called filtering. Before I show you that, I'm going to return to the default view. Notice that right here we have what's called the list's breadcrumb. It tells us which records are currently being displayed. And as we can see, we're viewing all of the user records. Now let's assume we want to narrow down the list to only include users that belong to a specific department. To set up this demonstration, first thing I'm going to do is personalize the list by removing the created and updated fields and adding the department and gender fields. The list view provides us with several tools for creating filters. First, I can use the column search tool by entering a value in the corresponding search box. I'll add equal sales to the department column search box and hit enter. Now the list only displays users where the department field equals sales. I can see there are 173 records. Notice my breadcrumb. Now shows me that I have a filter applied. And I can add another filter by entering equals female in the gender column search box. Now the list displays 78 records where the department equals sales and the gender equals female. And the breadcrumbs are interactive. I can remove part of the filter or I can click all to return to displaying all the records. Another way to create a filter is to use the search tool on the header bar. Here, I'll select the department field and enter equal sales and I get the same results. The most powerful tool for creating filters is called the Condition Builder and you access it by clicking the filter icon on the header bar. This opens a set of tools for building and saving more sophisticated filters. Each condition I create here will contain a field, an operator, and a value. So I'll choose the department field, the is operator, and set sales as the value. And notice I can add logical operators here. So I'll select and and specify gender is female. And I could save this filter for use later, or I could also add sorting if I needed to. I'll go ahead and run it, and I'm back to my 78 records of female sales users. Pretty cool, and very powerful, and I'd recommend everyone experiment with the Condition Builder to see what sort of interesting filters you can create. I'll show you one other quick way of filtering by using the actual field value itself. To do that, I'll come down to the field where the department is sales, right click to open the list fields menu, and then select either show matching or filter out. I'll choose show matching. And I've just created a filter to only show records where the department is sales. I'll clear that one. And let's see what filter out does. Now I can see I've created a filter to only show records where the department is not sales or is empty. So everything but sales. So lots of ways to filter down the data and get to the records you're after. And did you know you can also make changes to the data from right here in the list? If you have the appropriate roles, of course. And to do that, you just double click on the field you'd like to change. Make the change, and then click the green check mark. And here's a little tip for you. You can actually set the value of a field for multiple records at the same time. To do that, just hold down your shift key and click and drag to select the field for multiple records. Then double click within the selected area and make your change and voila, super productive. If you look to the far left of each row, you'll see a checkbox that can be used to take additional actions on a set of selected rows. To do that, select the rows, open the actions on selected rows drop down right here. This provides a list of actions that can be taken on the selected rows. 
this list will change depending upon what type of records you're, are being displayed. In our case, we could delete them. We could add tags to the selected records all at the same time. And if you remember in our previous video, we talked about the ability to add pages to our favorites list to provide quick access to screens that we use quite often. You can do that to your list views as well. To do it, I'm going to open the list controls menu and click the create favorite item. What's great about these is that when you click on the favorite, it remembers any sorting or filtering or customizing you've done, and it opens the list just as it was when you created the favorite. And notice while we're here, this refresh list item, clicking this will simply refresh the list from the database, which can be useful if you've had the list open for a bit. You want to refresh to pick up any changes that might have occurred to the records since they were last retrieved. That's about it. List views in service now. Consider yourself an expert. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.